Hello guys, this is Panzermeister 36 Today's video is going to be a quick railroad tutorial in which I will show you how I painted and weathered the graffiti on the side of this covered hopper. This is a full style panel graffiti and also has some reapplied uh, stencils for the reporting marks. So while I did this, I just filmed some of it and we'll turn that into a quick video for you guys today. Hope you enjoy. Now to begin, I sketched out kind of the pattern based off the photo that I want to apply to the car in scale. So as you can see my reference is actually Google Maps. I was just looking at a reference industry and I saw this car and it kind of caught my eye so I figured why not recreate that. So I don't really know what it says. These letters don't make any sense to me. I can't read graffiti but you can see like I said I've sketched it out to scale so I know roughly where to paint everything. First step is going to be, is going to, be to apply some hairspray to the model. This is Tracemay Ultra Fine Mist Firm Control, and I apply two thin coats at about an arm's length away here. You want the surface to have a slightly, you know, eggshell, satin kind of finish on it. Now we're going to apply some white Tamiya paint. I'm not applying this super heavy because the hairspray is applied so that I can chip the white paint off and make some wear and tear. So I'm not going for full coverage, but you know, I'm trying to make it opaque white. So within a few minutes, maybe five minutes after applicating the white paint, I take a damp brush and I just rub up and down. And what happens is the water will soak through the white paint, which is still pretty fresh, but it's dry to the touch. And it will go underneath and encounter the hairspray and dissolve it because hairspray is water soluble. And that will make the white paint kind of flake away. And it happens in a very natural looking chipping pattern. This is a common technique used by aircraft and armor modelers as well to make wear and tear. And I'm doing it here to make the car have wear and tear from, you know, it could be the crew handling it or, for example, here they've kind of scraped off to show the, the stencils again. And then there's also just like rain and everything else kind of wiping away the crappily applied paint from the graffiti artist. Here I'm using a 1200 grit sanding sponge and just rubbing it over the surface as well. And this does kind of the same thing. It catches some of the exposed areas and wipes the white paint off those areas. And now I'm going in again with some water on my brush here and just kind of you know rubbing up, up and down and it will dissolve and make that chipping pattern. So there you go there's my white base paint applied and already has the wear and tear kind of built into it. It's not super heavy you could go a lot heavier if you want um, but in this case I'm just doing this for kind of like the crappily applied white base paint of the graffiti. Alright, for the rest I'm going to apply with a paintbrush. I've got some white and black acrylic paint here and I just went in and freehanded this. Um, There's really no other way. I guess I could have masked it all and airbrushed it but that would have taken too long and honestly this has a little bit of that imperfection that you expect when something is applied by hand by a not exactly skilled painter let's say. You know, this is just kind of like a a quick and dirty panel graffiti that someone painted on this thing probably with paintbrushes, rollers and stuff. So I'm just going in with my paintbrush here and you know kind of I'm, you can see I'm outlining it to start and then I go in later and fill it in that way it's easier if I make a mistake that I can use some of the white paint and kind of repaint any areas of the black I don't like. So you can see there on that K I've filled in the black and now I'm going in with another letter here. Outlining it first, making sure everything's you know in the right place. I've got my, right, right below me I have my two scale sketch so I know roughly where to space each letter out so that it all kind of fills in in the right way. And now here I'm actually going in and filling in the black to kind of you know finish off these letters. And there we go, that's our basic, I guess you call it the base coat, I don't know. You can see here I've actually added some little tags and scribbles that were maybe applied by the artist, that's a signature, I don't know. For those I actually just use a mechanical pencil. Right now I found a paint here which very closely matches the base red color of the car. I'm going to go in with this and repaint some areas where I want to make it look like uh, the black has worn off. So before, remember, we, we wore away the white paint to show that red underneath. Because I didn't hairspray, chip, and airbrush the black, I have to do this with a, with a paintbrush. 
but it's the same effect I'm going for. This paint is not really durable. It's been applied kind of quick and dirty, so it's going to flake away in some areas when the, the rain and the weather takes it off. So I'm just kind of closely mimicking the reference picture. It's not exactly the same car, so I can't make it exactly the same. And now here I'm going with some white as well. Again, just copying my reference picture for the wear and tear patterns. And now we've got the black areas kind of matching the wear and tear level of the white areas. Overall, I'm very happy with this. It looks good. It's not too difficult, and it uses a couple of different techniques here, brush chipping and also hairspray chipping. Now I've got some white and some kind of dark blue paint here, which I mixed to make a medium blue, because it seems like you can see kind of in the in the black areas, it looked like there was a graffiti applied on the car itself, kind of over the red. And then when they somebody else applied this big panel graffiti over top, they covered over that. And then in some areas where that paint is flaking away, you can see the underlying graffiti along with the underlying red paint of the car's base color. I think that's what it is. It's kind of hard to tell. So I, again, I'm just copying my reference picture from Google Maps. And I'm just painting it in. Again, same thing here, but some yellow, as you can see in some areas of the, of the car there. You can see like in the letters on the reference picture there, there's something underneath. I'm applying the paint not in a perfect way. I'm kind of keeping it rough and making it look like it's kind of chipped and worn. And some more details here based off the reference picture where there's some something going on with that underlying graffiti. All right, so there we go. The graffiti is basically done. It was pretty easy, and I'm actually very happy with it. I have not done that much graffiti, but this is probably my best one yet, so maybe I'll do more of this in the future. Now you can see here I've actually started to do the re-stenciling of the uh, reporting marks. I have a lot of uh, stencil decals here, but these ones from Smokebox Graphics are the sets I used for the numbers and the letters. These are really, really good decals. So you can see I kind of use some white paint to put a little air underneath there, and then I've actually applied the BNSF stencil here. And then now after I've applied the decals, which were soaked in water for 90 seconds and applied as usual, I take some Microsol and I just lightly brush over the decals, and this helps them to soften up and stick nicely into the surface and avoids that decal silvering. Now when that dried, I actually took a little bit of lacquer paint thinner, which is very, very hot, and I very, very gently, with a tiny amount of that lacquer thinner, I kind of just tapped over these letters and numbers because I want them to have a little bit of a bleed effect. Because when you look at the reference picture, you can see that they're, they're not perfect. They were just kind of spray painted on with some kind of a stencil, but it wasn't quite flush and perfect. So they have a little bit of overspray and bleed. So by actually using the lacquer thinner to essentially melt the ink of the decals very carefully, I can replicate that. And I think I actually did a pretty good job. Uh, you can easily go too far with that lacquer paint, so use only a very, very, very small amount. And with that, uh, that's about it for this video. I was trying to keep it nice and quick and brief because I just wanted to cover the graffiti application for the dust and the rust on the trucks and the lower assemblies there. I will, I will link you to a video in the top right corner there where I did the same weathering effects on different car. So if you want to see those, check that video out. It's not too difficult. And like I said, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. If you like my work, you can support me for a few dollars a month with the Patreon link on screen now. I really appreciate the support if you can afford it. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. As always, take care, stay safe, and happy modeling. See you.